Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon, and I am very happy to be bringing you the first of the Versus series that I've discussed in a previous video. And in this week we're going to be coming up against Pokedex, a fellow Poketuber and friend of the channel. His uh, name on PTCGO is Razark, so if you ever see him, uh, drop him a kind word from us. So let's uh, get started, we're going to be doing three different battles with three different decks if that makes sense so in a way it's going to be a best of three but even if one of us has won after two games we'll carry on and have a third one just for bragging rights sorts of thing so uh, based on his last video he mentioned that he was playing um, Landorus Bats in his last tournament so I'm going to try and snipe him in game one by bringing Yvokal Garbodor with Seismitoad in here to uh, try and make it difficult for him to win as I imagine if that's a deck he took to a tournament that's probably one he's comfortable with and will be playing in one of the three games at least. So I'm going to be bringing Evil to Garbodor uh, to try and snipe the early game uh, like the tryhard that I am. And then I'm going to be playing a Robotee Seismitoad, which I showed off in the last video, and finish off with Speed Florgus, the deck that I'm most likely bringing to my next tournament. So let's send that uh, invite and see if he will pick up. I've just been chatting to him, so hopefully uh, he'll accept this challenge here. So here we go, game number one against Razark, and he looks like he's had uh, Metal, Fairy, and Dark Energy in his uh, opening sequence, so not the prediction that I went for straight away, but we'll uh, see what, we's, what he's got here. Uh, we're going to start off with a decent hand with uh, the Oblivion Wing Yveltal, pretty good start here, and we do have Juniper as well. And it looks like we're up against some sort of Fairy build with the Xerneas coming down straight away. We do have a thin Garbodor line, just the 1-1 one, one in here, so hopefully we can find that fairly quickly to try and shut down whatever sort of Aromatisse build this is. We're going to see a comp search early from him, so a good start after the fairy attachment. We see that he's got teammates as well, so pretty interesting build straight up. We're going to see a fan club, and hopefully we can get some more knowledge uh, into what deck he's playing now. It looks like it's going to be a Mega Guard Warry X deck, pretty powerful from the offset here. Uh, very scary stuff. Again, though, I feel if Garbodor can come down, we can eventually shut this sort of deck down. So we're going to start off pretty aggressively attaching, and we're not going to end here. Although he did have the comp search, um, and he's likely got support next turn, I feel like I can value having Darkness Energy in the discard pile and having an extra card here. Um, we can Acro Bike as well, something I've teched in, just to uh, a couple of those in here. And um, straight away we're going to go for a laser, because if we can force sleep on our opponent here, which we have been able to, we can try and prevent a early Geomancy. And his deck, of course, works very well with having a lot of energy. We're going to go um, for the Oblivion Wing for just 10 because of that resistance. And unfortunately we didn't find an attacker, so we're going to have to be attaching to Trubbish here. And luckily for us, our opponent does stay asleep here. And that poison damage is going to rack up with Verbank in play as well. Some fairy decks do run slurp buffs to clear off poison, but we don't see any Swirlixes so far from our opponent. And in a Gardevoir deck, it doesn't seem like they have much space for that sort of thing. So hopefully we can make that laser stick this turn and make it awkward for our opponent to do anything. Another thing to notice, he did have teammates in the discard pile. Again, we can be using poison damage to manipulate that so that we take knockouts via the poison rather than actual damage. And if we can do that, we can prevent teammates from being an effective card in his deck. We're going to see an early VS Seeker for a second fan club. He's really able to develop his board in terms of Pokemon, but hopefully we can prevent any more energy hitting the board. We see a second Spritzy, so covering himself here. And he also goes for a Spiritomb, which is pretty interesting. Uh, he's actually going to use this for an Ultra Ball play. Pretty interesting. Uh, to go for the Aromatis. Potentially so that he can protect energy this turn. Um, and it looks like that's what he is going to go for here. Maybe he has a Juniper as well. But no, he's just going to stay asleep and hold his hand of one. Interesting to see that he only has a one card hand here. I thought he would have had a stronger one. Um, seeing as though he did have that comp search. Here, I'm going to... We've got a pretty difficult decision here. Because... I'm pretty sure that he not got a weak hand, um, just because he's had options to get Jirachi and stuff. So I still feel like I'm going to do a sort of cold call here and think he's actually got a better hand than he's trying to reveal here. 
If we attach a muscle band to the active, we can get a knockout on this Xerneas. Um, via the poison. It could be that he's holding a VS Seeker though, and just hoping for the uh, teammates. And for some reason my clicks aren't registering. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to attach it here. And VS Seeker for a Juniper could be pretty horrible for us. Um, and still my clicks are annoying. You can hear me frantically clicking. Enning, oh man. I know he's too good of a player to just hold nothing in hand. It's just whether it's a Juniper or a VS Seeker. Hmm. See, this is why I like to see that he's got his video recording as well, so I can see uh, if my cold calls are just way off and he's got nothing. I value our DCs in this matchup. I'm actually going to go for the end here. Maybe pretty risky, but I've got a cold call on him, I think. Uh, it also means we can find Floatstone early on, which is pretty good for us. And then we can Ultra Ball away Jirachi. We could go straight for Garbodor, but I don't feel like he needs his... Um, Aromatis just yet, so we'll find an Yvel Tolly X, so we can actually start attaching to this now, rather than our wasted Oblivion Wing damage. And we're going to hit the 30, and the poison will knock out this uh, Xerneas, and we've set up a nice Yvel Tolly X for next turn. The only issue is we did give him a fresh hand. I'm not sure if that was the good play or just a pretty silly one. But I valued having DCs in the deck there. And I felt like, because he had comp search so early on, and he was VS Seekering for fan clubs and stuff like that, that he did have something. Um, just my own intuition, I guess. But sometimes just because they have a no card hand, or a low card hand anyway, doesn't mean they have nothing. Uh, we're going to see an Ultra Ball away for some more supporters to find another uh, Guard of War EX. We also see the first Spirit Link come down, and then we do see a Sycamore. Uh, getting ri rid of another end, so a lot of supporters hitting the discard early. There is the Mega Evolution. We have to be wary. 210 HP plus the resistance. It's going to take a lot to deal with the Mega Guard of War EX. And we see a regular attachment and probably a Geomancy this turn. That does look to be the case here. We see an attachment onto both Guard of War's. Pretty safe play there. Here I am going to bench the other Yveltal. And just go straight for the Juniper here. We do find Seismitoads and a laser. Uh, no real means of switching though. We're seeing 3, 6, 9, 12. Next turn he can go to 15. So I can feel fairly comfortable attaching another DCE to Yvel Tolly X. I'm trying to think of what he could drop to Lysander kill us. He might tech Mewtwo. And that would really be annoying. It's quite possible they'll tech Mew 2 actually. I feel like I can hold the DC in hand. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Down to... Hmm. If I attach to this one, we're getting 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I imagine he'll Geomancy to 18. Resistance down to 160. So I would need another attachment. Uh, plus the laser. So I am going to manually attach here. Bit risky if he has a Mewtwo. But for now we're just going to go for the Oblivion Wing. He would need to find Mewtwo and uh, a Fairy Garden. Not too difficult for him to get. But I, I'm not sure if he even plays it in the first place. So trying to play around Mewtwo is kind of tricky. We could find ourselves pretty embarrassed this game. But to deal with Mega Gardevoir. I feel like this is the risk we need to take. Because next turn we can go for a Lysander Catcher play. We see an attachment onto the Xerneas EX. And luckily for now, my internet connection is staying up. It's been pretty bad all day, so hopefully we don't lose to any disconnects this <laughs> around here. And it looks like he's taking his time to decide as well. I know that it may seem like for him I'm taking a while to decide, but obviously I'm trying to converse my... Um, strategies and thought process with you guys and there is a geomancy as we expected and it goes on to the xernia cx and the gardevoir as well so trying to play pretty safe here and so our output is 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 14 hmm. 
we can get eight off of the chorus if we go for that. If we drop a toad. Which I'm happy to do. If I drop toad, we can find Garbodor. Or I could just wipe out toad. Uh, I mean, wipe out Aroma. Getting rid of Aromatis isn't really a problem, though. I could get rid of maybe the other Gardevoir and wipe off two energy. Because then I'll have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. No, because then he can just single attach. Um, difficult decisions here. I'm definitely going to drop a Scyther Toad if my mouse will let me. <laughs> um, it's if I want to just catch her up Aromatis or if I want to try and search for Garbodor to deal with it. Also, we could go for a Y Cyclone to take a, another prize here, put pressure on. We could just Y Cyclone in Aroma, but we would need to find Muscle Band or waste another laser. Hmm. If we go for Lysander, no, we need Garbodor set up for this sort of play. I'm going to play it pretty safe here. Although he's stacking up a lot of energy, I feel like Garbodor is something we need for now. And if we can find more energy, we can try and back ourselves up a little bit. Actually, I'm going to hold off on manually attaching. And we're going to Ultra Ball away to find Garbodor. So that we can also... Oh, Garbodor's prize. Didn't even check that. <laughs> Did not even check that. That's terrible for us. That's really something to check. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we'll just grab one of these for now. We've got the laser. He is awake. Darkrai is also prized as well. I tech Darkrai just for free retreat when we don't have our abilities online, but that's also prized. Um, so pretty sloppy turn here from us. Bad, bad start. I'm not really a Yveltal player. I've sort of I built this just to try and counter his uh, Lando bats that he's been playing recently. If I'm completely honest, I'm not the best Yveltal player. Um. And it's sort of showing. I didn't even search for Garbodor. That's just shocking. Uh, we're going to see a Fairy Garden. Just fingers crossed we don't see a Lysander this turn. Looks likely he's prepping that Mega Guardi to come up. There is the Lysander on the Biggie Veltol. It had to be, really. And we're under pretty big pressure now. We're going to see uh, a movement of energy protecting it on the uh, Xerneas EX. And just a big knockout with Gardevoir here. We're going to go to Trubbish because of course it has the Floatstone. We're going to go for a Laser. And we do get heads, so we've got decent luck with the Lasers so far. Uh, we could go for the end, but he's not really searching for anything. Um, and we do sort of need stuff here. I'm going to bench a Yveltal just to get more cards off of Colrus here. Because we need some energy. Do you find a DCE? If we DCE a Seismitoad, we can poke for 60, I don't know, if, uh, 40 with a poison. Let's Acrobat to see if we can get a Stadium. If the lag will let me. <laughs> oh, I don't want to lose to Disconnect. I mean, we're in a bad spot anyway, but it just look like from his end that I'm just disconnecting because we're in a bad spot. <laughs> and that's not what's happening. It's just my third world internet right now. And there is the Acrobike. So another iffy one. We we need to keep DCs. DCs are crucial in this matchup. We do play trump cards, so... Um, we could just go for Y Cyclone to reserve energy a little bit. But we don't have another Uveltal to keep it on. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Fourteen down to one thirty. Hmm. I think we need to go onto Seismitoad this turn. And just try and force this just literally hope for a Tails flip here. The Gardevoir does wake up, but we might at least um, stop him from max potioning, maybe forcing him into a different attacker this turn. So Gardevoir really has got the incentive here. Potentially stacking up that uh, Yveltal and not going for the early Lysander was kind of risky on my part. 
sort of begging for the Lysander. We're going to see the Sycamore getting rid of one of those max potions, so good thing we Quaking Punched, I guess. We're going to see a retreat into the Xerneas EX. So we're going to survive this turn. And we're going to get smacked for 60 to the face with Breakthrough. And he's deciding where to snipe. I don't feel like the snipe damage is going to be too uh, important in this game. Maybe onto Trubbish, I would say. He actually goes for the other one. The other uh, Yveltal. And now 170 is the target. 3 energy on. And now I'm just thinking I should have kept the switch. Um... Oh, come on. It's really annoying that I can't see my discard pile. What is going on? I use mouse keys as well, so sometimes it confuses this game for some reason. I'm going to go for the prof letter just to scout the deck. So we've got um, the escape ropes, the only switching card we have, and we sort of need that in hand right now to move the seismitoad. So looks like we're stuck quaking punching this turn. We can find a dark just for the sake of grabbing a dark energy. We're going to attach it to uh, the Yveltal once again. And it might be a play where we end here and try and dodge the Lysander. And go for a Quaking. But also we have a lot of good stuff in hand. So I might just hold my position a little bit. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to go for a Quaking. It's a bit of a weak turn. But we just need to sort of prepare ourselves for... A guardy. It looks like um, Pokedex has gone through most of his energy. He probably plays a few more. But nine on board right now is just crazy. We see an N from him. So I don't really know what he's hunting for. Maybe he's just trying to disrupt us. We do find a trump card. I don't think that's going to be. It's a bit late for the trump card. But we do have Muscle Man, DCE, and Lysander. And that puts us on 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. We're 10 shy. 10 shy with resist. That's if we if we uh, choose to pick off the Guardi. A top deck of a laser would be pretty nice. <laughs> Not going to lie. Or comp search. Comp search is a good out as well. A couple of outs we can top deck here. We do see the Mega Guard while come back out. And there's the knockout there. Taking two more prizes. And that is not one of the outs we needed. So we need to go super, super defensive here, I think. Yep, we gotta go defensive. Just gotta play N. We don't even have a Toad to block either. This looks like a pretty grim first start for us, especially because we couldn't find Garbodor. He's not had to use any max potions anyway, but we've had to play around that because of the lack of Garbodor. Otherwise, we could have swung with Y Cyclones a bit more. And once again, it's taking its time to uh, put down the muscle band that I've clicked on. So we're going to be seeing a lot of Aromatisse in this best of three. Because I'm playing. My two other decks both play Aromatisse. Um, hopefully this will work. If it doesn't, I'll just go to game two and pretty much concede. But I at least want to play out this game if the internet will allow me. Hmm. This is annoying. Trying to slow prey, he should he should uh, call a judge over. In friend battles, fortunately, you don't have Cammy telling you to speed up. Cammy really is just annoying. Excuse me while I just take a drink. Hmm, it looks like I'm probably gonna have a con loss here. 
let's see if this uh, picks up. Yeah, it's not even typing in the thing. Okay, so I'm probably just going to concede this game and go on to game two. It looked like he pretty much had it wrapped up. He had enough energy. If we were to evil ball, no, if we um, my play was basically to attach DC muscle band. Oh, there's the muscle band. Okay, we'll try and carry on. Um, it's still pretty difficult to win from here. We're gonna go for the end just to try our best. <laughs> there's my thing. Um, we're gonna go for the retreat and just go for the oblivion. It's more than likely he's going to have answers here. But he has gone through a few resources. And if we can build um, a Yvolto, we might have a chance just to sweep a prize or two. I mean, two EXs potentially. He has gone through a lot of his uh, supporters. It really does suck that I can't look at my discard pile either. All of these things <laughs> come from having terrible, terrible internet. Which I just can't change. I've got a router literally right underneath my feet. And it's still pretty damn terrible. So I'm not sure if he's taking his time to decide now or it's just my internet again. <laughs> With a three card hand there might not be too many decisions. There is a Skylar here. So we're going to see a max potion more than likely. There it is. And it's going to make it difficult for us to knock out this uh, Gardevoir now. Here is the Aroma play that we definitely need to cut out, but we just don't have Garbodor here. And that's going to go all the way back up to us needing to hit 230. And for now we're hitting 2, 4, 6. Oh, he's going to retreat. Oh, okay. Just protect the Mega. It makes sense here. He's got enough energy and he's going to force a Lysander out of us. Even if we do have the damage here. So we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Oh no, do we have muscle band? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 16, 18, 20, 180. We need Verbank laser. And obviously I can't capture him. So that's game one. Oh, my E is one of the things I'm using for um, uh, my mouse keys so we're going to concede there and it's game one over to Pokedex and now we will pick our uh, our next ones I think he is going to um, cut the video so here we are guys game two versus Pokedex and we're going to be using Aroma Toad as I said earlier on and hopefully uh, we do a bit better this game. <laughs> I'd prefer not to get steamrolled in my first ever uh, Versus series, but I'm pretty hopeful that won't happen. Looking at our hand, though, that could be the case. Um, Aroma Toad, uh, and it's against Nine March as well. Super slow start from us. We, we just have to attach pass. That is shocking. And just hope that he stays asleep here. Um, that's just one of those hands. He wakes up as well, so no no luck even there. Uh, we see an early battle compressor, Night March, one of these decks that's very happy to capitalise on slow starts like this. And they rarely ever play ends. If they play N, it's going to be a one count and surely he won't use it in this sort of situation. We really do need a top deck next turn. <laughs> we see two Lambert and Light and a Sycamore, so it's likely he's got a VS Seeker in hand. Here comes the Dimension Valley as well. DCE and there is the VS Seeker. For the Sycamore, pretty strong start. And let's see how many other Night Marchers he had in hand. Uh, he gets rid of Lysander, Dimension Valley, and a Mr. Mime. So that's pretty okay. Uh, Acrobite comes down. Getting rid of an Illamize. That's a tech card that he likes to play for Seismitoad. Which we are, of course, playing. But not able to find it just yet. We're going to go for a defensive Lysander and also try and send that to sleep, I think. I think it's just we have to start attaching energy to try and stay in this game. And we're also going to try and bounce the stadium to try and make it difficult for this pump kaboo to attack. It does wake up, but now he needs DC and Dimension Valley at least, or some sort of switching card to go back into that Joltic. He 
There is a golden switch, no less. Very nice. And here comes the Joltik. Only able to hit uh, 40 last turn. We'll see if he can rack up any more this turn. A DC also comes onto the Pump Kaboo. There is an Illamize benched as well. And he's going to smack us for 40 once again. Uh, we do actually top deck an end, which is absolutely what we needed here. So hopefully we can uh, stabilize in this game. We can bench Aromatis. And also bench Keldeo and a, a um, Seismitoad. And we can manually retreat with a DCE. And we're actually going to get a knockout with a Quaking Punch. So a fantastic end from us. Um, we can... I'm going to attach just to Keldeo because we can, of course, move it with Aromatis. I'd rather keep damage off of the Seismitoad. Especially because it's Night March. So... By getting these two on board, we can uh, we may as well hold both of these for now, and just go for the Quaking Punch, and we'll see if his tech Illamize is going to uh, pay dividends in here. We do have Max Potion and Keldeo to get us out of um, confusion if we're able to find Darkrai, that is, because we use Darkrai as our means of retreating in this deck uh, also. So Pump Kaboo comes down, and the main thing is we've locked Trainers, so... It's going to be very difficult for him to get any more Night Marchers in. So fortunately, he's only got three in there for now. Sycamore is one way he can get more in. So there's a fourth. Uh, just four in there, so we should be pretty safe. We see a Grass come onto the Mew so that he can copy Illamize's attack. And it looks like that's the path he's going for here. We also see a Joltic hit the bench. And Mew's going to hit us for uh, 10 damage and uh, Confusion. And we top deck a... VS Seeker as well, so great top deck so far from us. We're going to go for the um, Hypnotoxic Laser. We may as well attach the Muscle Mans. I'm going to hold off on the Max Potion, I think, even though it would give us better chances with the end. Actually, you know what? I might use it. I'm going to use the Max Potion. They're not too clutch in this matchup, and also we just need a way of finding Darkrai this turn. We draw into three lasers. That's shocking. Really, really bad. Um... So he's going to break the lock for a turn, and we're just going to have to stick up Keldeo. And we're going to try and move around some energy to protect it a little bit. Um, I still want to keep one on side, so just in case he actually targets the Aromatis. But he's earned himself a turn of trainers here, and we will end our turn. Getting some damage on the Mew, at least, is going to be helpful. But him having trainers just swings the matchup back in his favour once again. Our main Pokemon search in this deck is actually a Pokemon Fan Club. I play three of those and we've not seen any of those just yet, which is a bit of a shame. We've done fairly well to stabilise from a bad start though, which I'm quite happy about. We're actually going to have a full out game, not just a donk of a Malamar, which it did look to be quite early on, to be honest. We see an Ultra Ball for a Lampant. Looks like he's got another Ultra Ball or potentially a Sycamore here. Dimension Valley bounces ours. We see a Grass Energy come onto Pump Kaboo. Interesting decision to throw it on Pump Kaboo. He still needs another attachment if he wants to uh, attack with him. A Muscle Man comes onto the Mew. And there is a Sycamore getting rid of that uh, Lampant. So good plays from him. We see an Acro Bike as well. I'll count his Pokemon in the discard in a moment once he's finished his uh, run through his trainers. We see another Compressor. So it looks like he might even be able to, be able to get a knockout this turn. And killing Keldeo is actually pretty big. Um... Because Keldeo is the means of us getting out of confusion. And of course that's what his plan is against Seismitoads. The fact that he attached a single energy to Pump Kaboom means that at least he stays in with Mew. So we can kill it next turn. Seven um, Night Marchers. And with that ten from the Rainbow Energy of all things, he's actually going to get the knockout there. So even the Rainbow Energy uh, damage did matter. We do have the Yvel Tolly X. I don't feel like that's going to be important. Um, if anything, it's just a Lysander target for a Joltik. Now, it's whether I go for uh, Juniper or N here. N is definitely going to be disruptive. I'm going to 
throw away all my lasers and still go for the end, I think. Oh, we got ahead, so we don't need to get rid of all of our lasers. We'll just go for the end. Um, we do find another spritzy and aroma. We don't need two, obviously. We can attach another one to the active. Seeing as though he's already asleep, there's no point in uh, sending it to sleep again. And we can, uh, we'll keep the Ultra Ball in hand for um, Jirachi. And just hope that the Mew stays asleep here. It's often a fingers crossed moment. Uh, he does wake up, so that's pretty uh, pretty grim for us. He does need to find another Night Marcher to hit the discard if he wants to uh, kill us via Night March, though. There comes a Mew. And then a DCE. And he's just going to hit us for 50 and... Um, Oh, he's just going to hit us for 50. What attack was that then? Oh, he's Quaking Punched. Okay. So here I'm going to finally find Fan Club. And we can grab Darkrai. And I might actually go for Seismitoad. If we go for a different Seismitoad, we just present that same threat. And we can knock out this Mew. Knocking out Mew doesn't give him another Night Marcher either. It's tempting to go for Jirachi. But we do have that Ultra Ball still in backup. So I'm going to go for these two for now. Obviously we can't use Ultra Ball this turn. but um, So we're going to have Free Retreat via Dark Cloak now that we've found Darkrai. And we're going to Freely Retreat move into a different toad and move our energy over killing this Mew and it's been a very fascinating game so far if I'm able to use trainers next turn and find Jirachi I'm almost definitely going to go for fan club uh, not fan club um, trump card trump card will really make it difficult for him to do any damage uh, good of him to have gone for the uh, quaking punch that turn it was quite disruptive, but also that confusion with uh, Keldio in the discard pile would have been quite annoying as well. So his other Mew comes in, still under trainer lock, so probably not going to be a crazy turn from him. But he does only just need one other Night Marcher to um, get a knockout and really make things tricky for us. Another important thing, if we are able to trump card, we can get Keldio back in the deck. Our bench will be full. But if we do sack off a, a Seismitoad at some point, um, if he's going for that Confusion Lock type tactic, we should be okay. And now that we have Darkrai, we can at least uh, retreat out of those statuses. So we can... If we actually find a Rainbow this turn, we can win with Darkrai. Because um, we can Night Spear. We need a Rainbow and a Laser. I feel like that's pretty strong. I think it's stronger than going for um, Trump card here. So I'm going to try and make the chances as good as possible. Ultra Balling for a Yveltal that we don't need. And Ultra Balling again to get rid of a Spritzy that we don't need. And we're going to go for the Juniper and cross our fingers for Rainbow and Laser. And we don't get either. We do get Comp. That only gets us half the way there. Um, drawing into all these supporters now late game. And now the decision is, do I sack um, Seismitoad? Because we need to retreat out of here. And if we sack Toad, I feel like we need to comp search for an energy this turn. So I'm going to get rid of both fan clubs. Sort of dead in this at this point in the game. We could also go for laser. But I feel like having the energy is more important here. And we're going to attach it to this one. Because we're going to be sacking it anyway. And then we're going to fairy transfer. So we still have the Darkrai play next turn if we can find an energy. And we're going to retreat into this one 
and basically give him two prizes with a Night March, but um, also threaten game next turn. And I'm not sure if he can even see it, because some people aren't even aware that Dark Rise is an attacker. Maybe putting the Muscle Band on it was um, a bit of a giveaway, but we're going to stick with the Quaking Punch. It's a tactic that's worked so far, and next turn we need energy, uh, just one energy for game, so... That's the uh, that's the idea here. Night March, a very scary matchup, but we've been able to navigate it pretty well this game. And there is the Night March attack, getting a knockout, and it's energy or bust this game, uh, this turn I mean. And we do top deck the DC that makes life um, a lot more comfortable. We can just move over and go for the Night Spear. And kill this Joltic on the bench as well for game. And it looks like it's one all. So I've brought it back, saved my pride a little bit. <laughs> and um, we're going to go on to game three where I'm playing Speed Flogus, a deck that's um, pretty good. So I think, again, he's going to um, cut the video and I will do some editing as well. And uh, when we have our next game, we will uh, see you there. So here we go, game three. That was a pretty decent game too, I would say. We brought it back pretty nicely with Darkrai there to finish. And we're coming off, ending up strong with um, Speed Flogus. And we'll see how we can do here. And also we'll see Pokedex's third choice deck. We mulligan early, revealing that it looks to be a Speed Flogus build. And we do actually start with Flogus as well. well again, supporterless, but we do have Skates, which we can uh, hope to get heads on. And also... Acro bike. It looks like we're up against size of toad of some sort, so it really would help if we got a good thing off the acro bike here. Doesn't look like we're getting any help today. We've been <laughs> drawing pretty damn poorly, especially in Florgus where um, we have just so much draw power and we've somehow been able to avoid all of it. Um, we can pass turn over, and he's playing a size of toad variant of some sort, and that can pose threats in all different ways. We can see an early Sycamore, hopefully that will shed some light. So we see some Lightning Energy, so it's probably there. And we also see the Mega Manetric. We actually see most um, Cybertoad Manetric builds play just normal Manetric. So it could be that it's some sort of Rough Seas build. And if that's the case, it could be very awkward. We're going to see a combination of things. Laser, Crushing Hammer Heads, and Headringer. Very strong start from our opponent. And we've done pretty poorly to turn one. All we can do, once again, we're in one of these positions where we just can't do anything. The only thing is that he didn't actually find um, DCE, which is really in nice for us. We can spend a VS Seeker on Lysander and just manually attach for turn. We do have Slurpuffs in here, if we can actually find them, <laughs> um, to deal with poison at some point. But for now, we're in a pretty grim spot. Lysandered up Manetric as well, just to force him to have more cards to actually Quaking this turn. And if he has an N, he's probably got a decision on his hands. Because next turn, if he doesn't crushing hammer us, we can actually get a lead. We are going to see a Jirachi hit the field. And he's just going to go for a Sycamore. And we see another Mega hit the discard pile. That's nice. And a Headringer goes as well. We see a Muscle Man come onto the Manetric and an Energy. And he's going to keep up with the aggro. And we actually find, finally, a... Ultra Ball, we don't play Jirachi in here, um, which right now I'm kicking myself for, but we do have the lead attack, so I'm going to Ultra Ball away, Aroma and Muscle Band, and we're going to find a Swirlix, because Swirlix can draw us cards if we can find Slurpuff next turn, so we're going to go for Swirlix, bench him, Lysander up Jirachi, trying to once again make it hard for him. And we're going to have to attach a second energy just so we can use lead um, because of the headringer. But at least we can find a juniper. And once again, we're in one of these spots where we've got to draw our way out of a bad start, which is pretty grim. I, I don't like seeing this, especially against some, another player who I know is good. And um, he's probably going to be able to capitalize on these bad starts. Luckily, we have at least had Lysander to try and slow him down a little bit, slow down the trainer lock. But if he finds a switch and an energy, he's going to get a knockout with Manetric. So 
pretty grim start. Hopefully we can uh, climb our way back into this game. There is the switch. And there's also a Ultra Ball for another Manetric. So it looks like he's playing a bit of a thick line of Manetric. He's actually going to go for the Lysander and take a single prize and do 20 to the Florgus. Um, I'm not too against that. Oh, we, we're not dead. We have uh, 60 HP. I forgot about that. Um, that's also actually better. We can evolve out of the status. So here we can... Um, how low do I want to drop this hand? Do I want to get rid of the Juniper? I think I do. I think I just want to full four cards off the bike here. We need to capitalize on the train as well. We have them. So we can Ultra Ball into a Swirlix. And... What? <laughs> are you actually joking? All three of my Swirlix are prized. Not only the status one, but also the tasting ones. Okay, I didn't account for that to happen. I mean, prizing one of them maybe, but prizing all three is just absolutely shocking. That's just absolutely horrible. When, I don't think, no, I don't think that's ever happened to me. <laughs> so we're going to attach to the Xerneas and just bike. But man, we're in a horrible spot now. Really bad. Roller skates is going to come down. At least we're getting some trainer draw now. We can acro bike. Find EXP share. It's a useful card. We're going to slap it onto Florgus. Because he could be a garbage build. Um, should I use a max potion now? I feel like we might have to. I think we need to keep trump card in hand because um, we can't get rid of both of them. I play two in here now. Um, can't get rid of both. Otherwise we're at his sort of will a little bit. I'm just going to go for the max potion, I think, on the active. Because we don't have the evolution. We don't have a way of waking up. And that's just shocking that we prized all three Swirlix. That's just really bad. Really. I mean, Slurpuffs. Not only do we not have the one that cures status, we don't have any of the ones that can draw us cards. Just horrible. Um, so the Manetric's going to knock us out this turn. And he looked like he was just top decking there. So at least we've um, put a stop to his aggressive start here. And we've not been um, train locked just yet either. I feel like because he has two Megas in the discard pile, he's probably going to want to trump card himself. So I actually feel pretty safe going for an Ultra Ball here. Especially because we're not under train lock for a bit. He's rating the fact that he is Manetric. We're going to grab another Spritzy. Seeing as though the Swirlixes are doing nothing this game until we find them from prizes. And we're going to start getting some attachments. We need to start out-attaching... Um, the Sizerto player, so that his crushing hammers are becoming less useful, if that makes sense. And we actually have no more in deck, so this has gone swimmingly. <laughs> Left in deck, we've got our Fairy Gardens. Um, we've still got a Max Potion. We do have a VS Seeker. Um, not much I want to really search for with Acro and uh, Roller Skates for now, though. But everything we've wanted to do this game has just not worked out. <laughs> I really need to be doing my deck checks. It's just I don't want to waste time when I'm recording for you guys. In real life, I always deck check like hardcore, and I really stand by. It's definitely something you should be doing, but I've just not been doing it. Um, we're going to see Manetric swing for 40 and then another 20 here. So we find Fairy Garden just in time, and now we are going to be searching for a um, Max Potion that we do have still in deck. So... The roller skates is the tails. The acro bike, however, does find us a max potion, but it also means we have to get rid of our last VS seeker. So we are at his will a little bit. So we need to not draw like much at all. 
because he's only got a one card hand, I could either Bright Garden and kill Jirachi to take two prizes and try and stabilize with Swirlix and try and find like a Slurpuff. I could just capture up the Silent Toad and try and stall him. We're going to attach here. And also because we have a Romatis in deck, if I could find a Romatis and Max Potion, that would be ideal. So that we don't waste any more energy. I feel like taking a prize is important because we need to find our Swirlixes at this point. We're going to bike and try and find a Roma. And we do find it in a roundabout way. And we're going to evolve. And it looks like we've got a pretty decent setup here. We're ready to start rolling through him. We're going to move the energy for now. And go for the max potion just in time. And then we're going to freely retreat, go into this Florgus. We did attach the EXP share to this one, um, which makes the Manetric more powerful. But the idea is we're not going to be in one-shot range, so our max potions will be doing the trick there. And it looks like now he's the one drawing pretty dead. We draw into two Slurpuffs, not surprising. We had a 50% chance of drawing into at least one, so we have both. We don't actually need to be tasting at all like at the moment. We do see a laser, that's Tails, which is fortunate. And just a 40-20 again. We're going to retreat here. Go into this Florgus. Because I don't want extra damage that we don't need. And sitting at 140 HP is safe. Even the Mega can only hit 130 if he... Um... Oh no, it can hit 110 if he goes with this one. I'm going to move over some energy protect it as best we can and just go for a bright garden threatening again he needs to really top deck his way out of this soon it really sucks to see that his um deck is just crapping out on him but we have six more turns as well <laughs> we're on our own clock because we've got rid of all of our trump cards pretty risky from us He can only see three VS Seeks in our discard pile, so he might not even be thinking about that either. Maybe if he goes into Seismitoad. Oh, what? He was able to hit 140. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. So we can at least retain an energy. That's fine. That's not a problem. We needed to do that anyway. We're going to go for the Fairy Transfer. And just keep on going with Bright Garden. Uh, we don't need to bench a Spritzy. We have enough damage to kill this Manetric. And see what he's top deck this time off of the prizes. And we take two more of our own. We find the Tasting Slurpuff. It's a bit late for that now. <laughs> but it would have been nice earlier on. The Manetric comes back. And we'll see if he's actually got a supporter this time. I'd like to see a Trump card personally. We're going to see a Crushing Hammer. It does get heads. As long as he doesn't have another one, we should be okay. And he actually just has an Ultra Ball. Let's see if he has another Jirachi. He's already, uh, we've picked off one of them already. Could have a Mega as well. Mega Evolve for turn might be a play. Depends how thick his line is of uh, Manetric. He's got to pick something here. He just goes for a Seismitoad. And he holds it in hand and passes. Here we're just going to keep applying the pressure. And swing for 100. And see what he can do. We only have four cards left in deck. But if he can't top deck anything here. He should be good for the win. And it's horrible to see a win like this. But um, neither of us has drawn too well. All he can do is attach the DCE. That was his top deck. Pay retreat. And at least... Buy himself a turn. We're just going to simply Bright Garden. He's got one more turn to do something. I can't see any way he can knock out this Florgus this turn. He needs a switch. Just a lightning energy. So that is game. And um, horrible to win this way. 
but it's been a crazy game overall. I prized three Swirlixes, got rid of all of our trump cards and just YOLO'd it. And fortunately, his top decking was terrible. So really interesting three game series. Um, horrible to see it uh, go like that, but um, um, yeah, I don't know how to really describe it. Sometimes in Pokemon, you'll know being in tournaments and all that stuff, it does just happen. You just draw dead and you can't really do anything about it. I did my fair share of drawing dead, but we were just able to stabilize quite happily. Florgus is a deck that can do that. But if he had had so many situations where we would have been in so much trouble there, um, if he had another crushing hammer that got heads, or if he just um, was able to keep switching into attackers for another like two turns, we would have been buried because we had no more trump cards. We just had to do it so that we can max potion to sort of stay in the game in terms of prize trade. Um, because I was not to know that his hand was so terrible. And also the fact that he drew dead so many times was just kind of unlucky on his part. But I hope you enjoyed this three-game series. Um, let you know that I won. <laughs> I'll let him know that. I've got bragging rights in the first um, versus series. I've done it in a bit of a sad way, though. Him drawing dead. But three very interesting games. And I hope you enjoyed this, guys. And I'm sure I'll have Pokedex on for another versus series at some point in the future. He's a great guy. A uh, real good fan of the channel. And he is churning out some great content with some innovative deck ideas on um, pretty relevant stuff as well. So... Good to see him. If you've not subscribed to him, please do so. Poker decks, as I say. And um, if you see Razark online, also give him a cheeky winky face and just say 2 1. Just say that. 2 1, nothing else. He'll know what it means. <laughs> and um, yeah, I've been Joe from Omnifolk, and I will see you guys next time.